part of me says, oh, I'm excited because the, the world is going to get cleaner. And then the part of me goes, oh, that's going to affect my business. So that's, you know, kind of one of those, how do we merge the two of them together? Hireology's recruitment CRM empowers businesses to build their best teams with confidence. The company equips HR and business leaders with the skills and technology needed to manage the full employee life cycle. Visit www.hireology.com. All right, we are in for a treat today. We are meeting with Kim Huffman, the managing partner of the Neil Huffman Auto Group. Um, welcome, Kim. Thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you uh, wanted to do this. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I think it was probably, gosh, it's been quite a few years and I was sitting in your office interviewing your family history on yes. the dealership. Can you let our audience know just about the history of the Huffman Group? Well, it, I'm second generation. My father started it back in 69 with a Volkswagen dealership. And since then, we've added, we've uh, subtracted, we've added some more. I became a managing partner 10, 11 years ago and um, uh, took uh, a couple dealerships and we added a few more and um, put them together as a corporate way of thinking. It Before that, each of the individual stores had their own way of doing everything. Their, their hiring and firing, their sales, everything was totally different from one store to the other. Each dealership was like a thread, easily broken. But when you put it together, uh, it made it a, a stronger bind. And that was the purpose of why we are now under a larger corporation management style. Okay. Have you, have you always been in the automotive industry or did you start a little bit later? I started later. I, I, you know, I, when I graduated college, I definitely went into the family business, uh, retired at a very early age to become uh, a mom. And then when my father passed away uh, unexpectedly, then I came back into the business full time. And so that's going on 14 years now. I'm sure that they would be very proud of me. Um, I'm, I'm from the Louisville area. So, you know, I've seen your dealership through many years and um, really have noticed the philanthropy that you do for our area. Um, how do you feel that that sets you guys apart from your competition? It, I have to give credit to my mom on that. Uh, she grew up in a very poverty background. So her belief was if we can give without uh, exploiting it, then it's to the benefit of, you know, to the others. We're really big into children, their educations, their health, their well-being. Uh, and and then, then you get into each one of the dealerships, manufacturers have their push on what they want. So individually, we do that. But as a whole, um, we work together in the community without really saying, hey, look at me. Um, you know, we've done the, the mayor's hike, bike and paddle. Well, that's a family oriented. Everybody's involved in it. You, you, know, you definitely get involved in a healthy lifestyle. That was a natural. And, you know, but behind the scenes, we for years have done things with children and we'll continue to do it. It, it makes the employees feel like they are part of it, but it's also part of my background, what, you know, what my parents said, Hey, I want to do this. That's great. So how is 2021 going over 2020 and what did you change in 2020 that you are continuing with in 2021? I have to say the stimulus package had, had a, a very nice side effect that I we did not see coming. January, February, March of last year were just, March last year was just outstanding. We're going, oh, this is wonderful. We're going to be off on a great year. And then we had the closing. And I am the chairperson for KADA. And in, in that role, we were going, how do we get the dealerships to be considered necessary, essential? And so talking with my employees, they said, these are the reasons we need to do it. So we came across across the board for the dealers in Kentucky. We were leading it. 
this is how we wanted to um, say, okay, we want to reopen. And yes, we'll follow the guidelines. Yes, we'll have all of this. Um, anybody that comes in, they have to go outside and walk around. They have to see it. The hardest part was if a salesperson wanted to take a person for a dental ride, we no longer do that. How do you do that legally? How do you make sure that that car is going to come back? You know, 99.5% of your uh, customers, you're not going to have a problem. That was some of the legal things we had to change um, within to adapt, to be able to allow the customers to walk around to see. We did a lot of video uh, chatting with them. We had, you know, our salespeople would walk around the cars. Um, the service department, you know, it was definitely necessary. You needed to have your vehicle if you were going to go to work or whatever. You needed to have it for the emergency of it. So the um, service department, that was hard because the technicians had to wear masks all the time. You know, they're out there and, and they're constantly, their arms are up and down. They're constantly doing things and having to take the mask on and off. So we provided, um, you know, more space for them. And so we created what the government wanted us to do. We said, we're in for it. We will do it. You know, we're not going to say no. Across the board, all of our dealerships follow the guidelines. It ended up being really a good thing because the customers were now comfortable and they came back and we had a really nice year. But the procedures we put in place last year, we're still going to keep. We still have no cars on the showroom floor. We will bring the cars to the customer. We will do the video. Um, the sales uh, department uh will stand outside of the car, let the customer go through, and they will virtually tell them how to do it. And the customers are comfortable with it. They understand the purpose of why we're doing it. And my employees love it. They're, they're, they're not having problems. So this year, you know, we're always a little concerned, January, February, what is it going to be like? Well, February wasn't so bad, and March is looking like a typical really good March. So, um, you know, we were concerned about getting inventory. You know, used car inventory was an issue. How do you get inventory if you don't have customers coming in? How do you get inventory if the auto um, uh, auction houses are closed? We got to, you know, we became very creative. Being creative allowed everybody to have an opinion. And we opened the doors and said, okay, go for it. So we allowed the customers to help us to be safe. We allowed the employees to use their imagination to um, um, solve the problems. Nice. Do you, are you having an inventory issue right now in 2021? Not yet. Okay. And, and that, you know, that tends to be like a May issue. Uh, it, it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. So we may have a little bit of an inventory in two months from uh, one of our manufacturers who has a issue with a chip that is very um, delayed and being produced. But we're creative. We know what we're looking at in a couple months. We've looked at our inventory. We, we're going out looking for what we need to replenish it. Perfect. So again, being very creative that way. Nice. And I love that you are like including your entire staff and letting them give you their opinion and their ideas. You know, they're at the forefront of everything with the customers. Right. And right. You include them. Makes them yes. feel like well, you know, you, you, I'm not an expert. I also know that uh, I have to rely on my employees because they have that experience and I know how to get things completed as well as my partner, Shane, he is, you know, definitely in the front line of all of this. And so between the two of us, we're open to say, Hey, you know, give me an idea. Let's work it out. And, you know, the best thing, like what you and I are doing right now, these zoom conversations, and we can get it done without the managers having to travel 20 minutes, you know, taking an hour of their day to get here. They're in their office. They can do it. They can locate their information. It is actually more efficient in doing it that way. So I know that training has always been something huge for you guys. Um, right. When I first 
got in the automotive industry, I interviewed Terry Isaac, who was one of your, your trainers at the dealership. And I know that you, you were pretty, you were one of the only ones that I knew that had an in-house trainer, which was super cool. Um, speaking of like the Zoom calls and things like that, do you get a lot of your education now through like webinars and yes. podcasts? Yes. You virtually. Yes. You know, it, unfortunately, the outside um, vendors have a really good need to contact us. So they have provided a lot of that. So again, we can have our sales force from different stores log on and uh, do the training and then and they can do it that way. We don't need Terry to be in their uh, in their space but he can definitely uh, work around with it. But then he also goes to each individual that's new and says, okay, I'm going to work with you. We, we got the basics behind the scenes stuff. You've got all that. Now we're going to finesse it. So uh, he's extremely energetic and it makes it a lot of fun to listen to him because he enjoys doing that. He really does. Did you know he used to write articles for Auto Success? I mean, back in the early 2000s. Yes, I think I did. I mean, he he is such a he has such a love of the business that he, and he has a lot of ideas and we've gone with the ideas. As a result of our training program, we created a um, uh, uh, orientation department, and the orientation department meets once a month, and it is every department that a new employee will sometime need to know. So whether it's HR, whether it's the employment, whether it's um, our attorney, we are introducing them to marketing and the digital. So they, are, they can go and say, oh, I know who this person is. I have a question and I can go to them. So we've allowed them in the beginning to meet those who are going to assist them. And then they go through the training as a whole for the Huffman group, what is our core purpose? And then they go right into their department. If it's sales, if it's service, if it's part, if it's body shop, then they go into it individually that way. Nice. Nice. I have one final question for you. Um, There's a lot of trends going on right now. Which ones do you want to see take off? I've seen a lot of trends take um, take off that I think the one that I really appreciate the most is the hands-on um, customer service. I really love the idea of the employees getting involved with the customers and always saying yes. The trend of saying, oh, go down that way. I'm glad that's gone or going away. The trend of uh, you're wrong. I'm glad that's going away. There's always a way to solve a problem. And I love the idea that it is now more transparent and the problems get solved without any any confrontation. I love that. Now, the next trend, I'm on the border with this one, but the e-vehicles, part of me says, oh, I'm excited because the, the world is going to get cleaner. And then the part of me goes, Oh, that's going to affect my business. So that's, you know, kind of one of those, how do we merge the two of them together um, that they can marriage it together and still have a good um, outcome? Because, you know, the the business model of an e-vehicle does not correlate with the business model of the gasoline vehicles. And so how do we, you know, put it together? But I'm kind of excited to see where that's going to be in five years. And I'm constantly asking my peers, what do you think is going to be from five years from now? What do you see? Because if you look back five years ago from now, (laughs) we've gone through so many different changes um, rapidly. And I, you know, how do you address, how do you get ready for that next five years? You know, make sure that everybody isn't left behind. And I'm, I'm excited about the technology part. I think we're going to start seeing more and more education on mm-hmm. how to survive and what to do and how to thrive during, during the evolution of right. vehicles. So I do. Well, another trend real quick. Yeah. I love the fact that there are more women getting in the automotive business. I really 
you know, uh, t- we have technicians, we have people in the service, we have people in parts, obviously sales, um, in the body uh, collision. You know, they haven't gotten into the, uh, as a technician there, but I love the fact that we're getting into that area. 10, 11 years ago, I, I brought my whole uh, group together and I said, hey, listen, we're now a family and we're going to help each other. And it's not you against me. It's us together because you can't survive if I don't give you, you know, your your work and I can't survive. So it was the first time that they ever had that feeling that they were included. Goes back to including them into making the decisions and they've done a good job with it. Well, it sounds like a very nice place to work and be part of. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for joining me today. And it's always so good to catch up with you. Well, I, I appreciate it and I love your questions and I can't wait to have more people get involved in listening to um, uh, your questions because they are really, really thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.